Hey, I want to tell you about RacerX's latest promo that they have going on. If you subscribe or renew today, you're going to get some awesome stuff. You're going to get a RacerX trailer sticker and a license plate frame. Obviously, you get the 12 print and digital issues. It's just $30 a year. You get a super sweet license plate frame and obviously the trailer sticker to let everybody know that you rep and read the greatest brand in moto. Go to racerxonline.com forward slash moto marketing and subscribe there. Hey, I want to tell you about Moto Brand. Moto Brand was founded during the 2020 COVID-19 pandemic when the sport that we live for was taken from so many of us, whether it's cycling or moto, waking up on a Saturday morning knowing that your local track was closed, uh, there, there would be no supercross, and for many of us that we couldn't even hit our favorite local riding spot or trail with our crew. We are forced to be reminded of how much the sport of moto and cycling truly means to us. Moto Brand represents a collection of individuals that not only ride, but live to ride. It's what we think of at all times of the day, and sometimes at a detriment to your relationship with your significant other. It's for those that look at their motorcycle or their bicycle as part of their identity. Maybe it's the way that you bond with your son or your daughter or your spouse. Perhaps it's your way to blow off stress of your day job, or even, hey, it is what it is, maybe even it's your marriage. This sport is more than just a sport. For many of us, it's a way of life. It's what keeps us ticking. It's what keeps us living. Moto Brand was created for a purpose, to be more than just a shirt that you can throw on in the morning, but these designs represent who you are and what you stand for. So I encourage you to head over to the motobrand.com, check out our collection. We have a pedal collection and we have a throttle collection, and there are more designs to come that stand for something. So head over to the motobrand.com, and we'll see you there. Welcome, Welcome to the Moto Marketing Podcast, presented by Racer X, the podcast for moto industry professionals, entrepreneurs, and riders. If you want to grow your brand and business in today's digital first world, you have to know how to turn a stranger into a fan, turn a like into a customer. You have to know how to turn attention into dollars. This podcast is dedicated to keeping you in the know on real marketing tactics that work in the moto world so that you grow your business and help grow the sport. Get ready to learn from the very same marketing experts trusted by Racer X, Lucas Oil Pro Motocross, GNCC, and NBC Sports. They'll help you navigate the world of digital marketing for your moto brand. This is the Moto Marketing Podcast. podcast. Presented by Racer X. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Moto Marketing Podcast. I'm your host, Luke Nessler. Appreciate you guys being with us today. Hey, I've got a special guest. As always, all of our guests are special. Uh, but we've got we've got somebody that most of you will will know and uh, have probably chopped it up with at the the track at some point or another in your career. We got Megawatt Matt Watson on the show. Somebody I've wanted to have have on for a while because Matt, I don't I I've gotten to know you over the last few years. But it's funny. I was thinking today as I was driving to the studio. I, I know you, but I don't know much about your story as far as how you got into the sport and how you've you know gotten into the circles that you're in and you're announcing all these races and you do all these things. And that's the story I'm hoping to tell today. So welcome to the show, man. I'm happy to have you on with us. Uh, well, I appreciate it, Luke. Uh, you know, it's, a, it's actually a pleasure and a privilege. You do such a great job. And like you said, we've got to know each other. Uh, over the last couple of years, I've got to know a little more about you. I kind of feel like Joe Dirt right now. Uh, <laughs> know the story. <laughs> yeah right so so we're both uh we're both west virginia guys um i think you and i started to get to know each other when you were doing some work with uh our friends at uh, rg motorsports and obviously have known who you are for years i something i have heard about you from other folks is uh, you're an advocate for trying to find um up and coming local talented riders uh i'm very close with the Kenef family cooper and cannon race for my my e emtb team and uh and they just love you to death and um and i think you you've got that reputation with a lot of of young guys so we'll, i want to talk about that um but man i always like to start from the beginning how sure. you're so embedded in the sport now how on earth did you get your start did you start as a fan like let's kind of go way back and and, and start with that Listen, man, it's real easy. Um, uh, you know, I came home from school one day. My brother had a old uh, Yamaha 80 street bike. 
that they had uh, stripped the lights off of stuff my dad gave to him and and he rode for a little bit but i was obviously way too short i was you know five six years old at the time and bikes were a lot different in the early 70s uh, i come home and there's a mini trail one day man the sickness started uh <laughs> No, I didn't want to do anything but literally learned how to read uh, with dirt bike, motocross action. Uh, you know, there was no ADD medicine. There was no this or that. There was no, they, they slapped me in the head and said, pay attention, dummy. Uh, <laughs> that grade, grade, you know, so I found something that I connected with. That mini trail turned into an XR75. The XR75, of course, turned into a YZ80. And then one day, Luke, in 1977, uh, at Twin Oaks Restaurant, you know where it's at, oh, yeah. in uh, Virginia, after a race at Pyramid Valley, we sat down beside the Coombs family. And long story short, by the end of our pizza, this guy had convinced me that if I got a good report card that I was going to meet my hero, Bob Hanna, on Memorial Day. And come to find out, Dave Coombs Sr. and Rita were both school teachers at the time. Uh, Dave found out that my report card was sometimes subpar because all, all I wanted to do was ride. So, uh, right away, Dave said, look, who's your favorite rider? Bob Hanna. You show me a good report card and you're going to meet Bob Hanna on Memorial day. Well, I didn't know what that meant, but all I knew was I bugged him every 48 hours. He gave <laughs> me a phone number. I called that man every 48 hours to see if he remembered me. The next 12 weeks, he got report cards that were adequate and uh, met requirements and he kept his end of the deal you know i studied a little bit i, I put some time in and sure enough come on world day luke i met my hero bob hanna I'm, I'm in the back of a box truck sitting beside an ow40 works yamaha okay in morgantown west virginia at the holiday inn dude <laughs> are you kidding me happen you know I'm, I'm a 12 year old kid uh at bridgeport junior high and I'm sitting next to Keith McCarty, Bob Hanna, uh, Jim Felt comes walking over. Uh, he was working with him at the time. And, and I'm, I'm just in awe because these are the guys I read about. These are the guys who instilled the sport into me. These are the guys who made it popular, who made it uh, interesting and captivated me. And this school teacher from Morgantown, West Virginia, was my hookup. Well, let me tell you something. I never let go from that time, Luke. I hitchhiked to High Point. And uh, junior high without my parents knowing, so I could paint the tire safety banners at the time, Luke. Okay, when it was evening, when it was dark, it was probably 8.30 or so in the summertime. Everybody was leaving, and I didn't have a ride home. And Dave said, hey, how the heck did you get here? Well, I had to fess up and tell him because I couldn't find a ride home. And sure enough, man, he got me back to Saltwell. He got me back to Bridgeport. That's crazy. And uh, For those that don't know, that's about a hour 45 minutes to an hour 15 depending on who's driving uh from from saltwell to uh maybe actually probably further than that from saltwell to high point so it's not a hop skip and a jump i mean that's for hitchhiking that's no joke 14 yeah okay i was 14 i told him i was going to get there i was determined bro the easy part was getting back down 79 but like you said i had to get from high point to i-79 <laughs> right at dark that's crazy. <laughs> so, and his, um, they included me in everything, yeah. Luke. Um, every race. It didn't matter. Steel City, High Point, uh, back in the days of Kenworthy's, Budge Creek, all those places, it was a phone call away for Davey and his dad. And at any given time, they made sure that anything that was going on, I was included in. And uh, that was the opening of the door. That's that's where the megawatt story begins, right there, bro. So and, where did the name uh, megawatt you know, come from? That, that's what I've always been curious about. Curious about too. I've never heard many people call you <laughs> Matt. It's always megawatt. Where where? What's the story behind that? Well, that's another good one. Dave Brozik, uh, the Weege. Uh, let's see, uh, a bunch of staffers. Dave Brozik, the Weege, myself, uh, some friends from work. Dave Langren. Langers was there. And uh, Shane Watts was with us. You might have heard of that guy, oh, Shane yeah. Watts. Yeah. You know, off road races here and there, a couple FIM titles, GNCC titles. This guy comes over, we're all at Roaring Knob. You know where that's at up in Maryland. Yeah. We're at Roaring Knob on a night riding. And um, Brozick yells, Hey, Wattsy. Well, at the time, Shane Watts and I both turn around and we say, Yeah. And I'm like, Whoa, whoa, what's I'm Wattsy. 
I've been, you know, I'm the local here, bro. I've been Watsy for 35 years. What? Oh, I'm Shane Watts. I come over from, I win some races. I'm the champion. Ooh, I'm the, I take people's nicknames now. So, you know, being typical Matt that I am, you know, we had a lot of fun with it. So by the time Brozick was done, he said, you know what? This foreigner may be Watsy, but he'll never be a megawatt. <laughs> and then it's stuck. It's stuck from and there. That was that weeds laying on the ground. You got langers going crazy. And I think from that time on, I've been called Matt by my mom, uh, a couple bosses, and the IRS. I think that's about it. So. <laughs> that's great. Hey, so there's a lot of a lot of folks that listen to this. I mean, you have a lot of industry uh, professionals, but you have a lot of um, young and upcoming professionals, kids in high school or college or, or that have just graduated and they're, or maybe they're, they're graduated, maybe they're 30, 40 years old, but they want to work in the space and they're not there yet. Um, so something that a lot of the, the listeners like to enjoy hearing from our guests when it's applicable is, hey, how did this guy get his his breaks? Obviously, you told the story about how, you know, at, at Twin Oaks, you, you ran into the, the Coombs family and, and, and you know, you built, started to build a relationship from there. But how did you get your first break as far as you announced so many of the things, whether it's Loretta's or, you know, we were just hanging out in, uh, in PA a, few, or a couple weeks ago at the Moto Fight Club event. Um, you're getting to do all these cool events, uh, the Nationals, things like that. How, how did you get your opportunity to, to grab that microphone and, and let your skill of just somebody tells you to go and, and the words just start flowing? That's your natural gift. How did you get that opportunity to do that? Well, I appreciate the kind words, uh, the compliment, the natural gift there. That's awesome. Uh, what people don't know, Luke, is I was 45 years old before I ever really picked up a microphone. Hmm. I did not go to journalism school. Okay. I didn't go to broadcasting school. I didn't work for the local TV station. Uh, as, as you said, get your foot in the door. Getting my foot in the door in junior high, I started my own sticker business. I bought stickers from Stick 'em Up for 25 cents a piece. And I sold them for a dollar to a dollar fifty a piece at local races, at school, all over the place. So okay, now all of a sudden I'm doing something with dirt bikes. Next thing you know, I'm working over at RGs as a kid in the back door uh, at, at 17. You know, boom, already in the dealership. So what you've done then is is you've become you know a, a, a fixture in a few years' time by working at a dealership. Everybody starts to know you. Then you advance your position. Then you deal with more people. But along the way. Gosh, uh, Luke, I went to every race there was. Let me tell you, there wasn't a Blackwater that I missed. There wasn't a, a Big Bear. There wasn't a National Motocross. Uh, if they had a trials over in the Ohio Valley, I went over and watched trials, okay? My dad took me to Springfield Mile, that type of thing. I love it. And once you get, you know, recognized uh, as, as having, you know, that kind of enthusiasm, that kind of love, naturally, if you've got any kind of memory, then the knowledge starts to build. One day, Tim Cotter calls me up and asks me for a favor, and that favor, and you know Tim very well, that favor, Luke, in 10 minutes, it went from riding dirt bikes with Tommy Harris to announcing GNCCs. <laughs> <laughs> Phone calls. Yeah. So I said, Tim, I, I don't know. Uh, you know, I'm a salesman. I, I, I'm a sales manager. That's what I do. Uh, I'm a product guy. He goes, no, I just need you to fill in for a couple races. And again, the rest is history. I, it kind of fell into place. Like you said, they put a mic in my face. I just started talking about the event, what's happened at past events. Uh, might have to throw in a Mark Hyde story. Might have to throw in a Bob Hanna story. You never know if it's uh, applicable to the situation. What's your What's your favorite thing as far as well, – actually, let's, let's do this, and then we'll go on your favorite thing after the break. What is your favorite event – that you are you get to be a part of on a regular basis, whether it's a Loretta's or the Nationals or these one-off events that, that Bytus is doing now. What, what's what's the one thing that you're like, man, I look forward to this every single year that I get the chance to do it? Well, man, you put me on the spot with that. Uh, holy cow. Everybody loves Loretta's. It's a grind. You've been there. You get it. Let me tell you something. Rodney and I are on, on that podium, or not the podium, we're on that tower at 15 minutes to 7 every morning, Luke. Uh, we put in four or five uh, hours. Uh, then Kevin Kelly and uh, Weege will come in. We go back at it. We have nighttime events. It's a grind. But to watch that competition, to watch that week of championships, to watch the uh, – let me tell you something. I call it – We, you, we, you know, we've got everything from tears, uh, tears to cheers down there. Uh, you, you watch hopes and dreams evolve. You watch hopes and dreams vanish. But I have to tell you, 
I'm a professional motocross fan. Everybody knows that. Uh, no matter where I'm at, uh, this all started because of the Marty Smith and Bob Hanna. You know, I'm here because I was a fan of those guys. And uh, to be able to be part of the Lucas Oil Motocross Nationals with, with Rob Bidas, uh, for anybody that doesn't know, our, e, our, our sound man, Ehab, he's one of the greatest in the business. Uh, to have Roy sitting in the uh, booth with us, running the show, I mean, that, that's a privilege to me. And I, I, I have to step back every time that I, that I start to get on that mic at a professional motocross loop and say, holy cow, thanks, Dave. Yeah. You know, I look back and, and, and thank Big Dave every time. You know, uh, I say a little prayer and thank my dad. But pro motocross is where it's at for me. Nothing gets me excited like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 hard to it's hard to beat that. I mean, it's the the pinnacle of the sport. It's the most exciting racing, and you know if that's what made you fall in love with the sport to begin with, it's hard to top it. Hey, when we come back, we're talking with Megawatt Matt Watson, uh, man of of many talents. He's he's done a lot in the sport. We're going to talk a little bit more about that when we come back. Hey, I want to tell you about our friends at Flex Racing. Flex Racing is a one-stop shop for all custom designs and products that you need to look good at the racetrack. Flex creates some of the most stunning and custom race day materials available today. Designing and manufacturing products that help you represent your team and your sponsors. Products like custom pop-up tents, table covers, chairs, umbrellas, bike graphics, bike mats, even gear bags. And I'm telling you, the gear bags, they're sick. We're going to get some made for Impact and our EMTB team. They're awesome. If you need your name or your logo on it, chances are these guys can take care of it for you. Flex also provides rider and team logos, truck and trailer wrap designs, custom t-shirts, and even jackets. Not only are the designs killer, but my favorite thing, the prices, right? They care about giving you the best possible price because Flex is entirely made up of riders and racers. They understand how expensive it is to look good and to be professional. So they've tailored the prices on all the products to be as affordable as possible to help privateers, big teams, small teams, everybody in between save the money that you guys need for things like travel, race fees, food, etc. They simply get it, right? Flex Racing's motto is secure the vision. They know that greatness exists in all of us and they're here to help us bridge the gap between our vision and our reality. So maybe it's time to replace your pop-up from last season or you need some fresh new gear or maybe even need to replace those graphics on your bike to display your team logo. Give my friends at Flex Racing a shot. You can check them out at flexracing.com. Let them know that Impact sent you. Let them know that you listen to the Moto Marketing Podcast and you can save 15%. Hey, big shout out to our friends at FMF. Uh, Little D and the guys are always doing some pretty exciting things, not just with the performance products, but man, they've got the coolest apparel in the game. And I want to give you guys an opportunity to get that at a little bit of a discount. If you go to FMF and, and, and pick up any gear you'd like, hats, shirts, whatever it is, upon checkout, if you enter the code MMP30, MMP30, you can get 30% off. So M M P three zero at checkout and get 30% off your order on FMF apparel. All right. Welcome back to the Moto marketing podcast. Hey, we've got megawatt Matt Watson on the show with us today. And, uh, Matt, you're, you, you make, you make something that shouldn't be exciting, exciting. You, you know, if it's a, if it's a slow race or a boring class, like uh, we'll use the Moto Fight Club for, for example. You know, the 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 industry class, right? It's you know, no names like myself racing guys that used to be fast and aren't as fast today, like Davey Coombs and um, you know Rob Fox and those guys, and and you somehow make that event exciting what are some of the ways maybe for somebody that person that's listening that wants to get into announcing how do you make something that's a that's that's maybe a four you know the excitement level of a 10 you always seem to bring stories and all this stuff into it loretta's for example there's so many great races but there's a lot of boring snooze fest races that you and your your peers always seem to make exciting through the way that you you know do the play-by-play on that what are what are some ways you've been able to do that over the years well first of all you mentioned my peers man and you know i, I work with the best guys in the business whether it's rob bitus whether it's weege uh west kane holy cow uh, the insane west kane love that guy nobody has a higher energy level than him <laughs> uh it doesn't matter rodney tomlin uh that guy's one of the best in the business for those who don't know him gncc uh voice uh you know but to make it uh, exciting, Tim Cotter told me one time, 
that uh, Dave Coombs told him, Dave Sr. said, Tim, if there's not a race, make a race. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and everybody's idea of exciting is different. I, I get excited. You know what? I was excited during the industry race. When you passed Davey Coombs, dude, <laughs> that was exciting. That's right. I was there with you, bro. Okay? <laughs> I felt you sliding past the 174 machine. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I hope everybody else felt it, too. And, uh, you know, things do turn into snooze fest. But what you do is, is you redirect. Uh, you talk about something that is exciting because the race may not be out front. But you know what? That guy going for 11th, man, he's putting it in right now. He's working hard. So you talk about that. Or, uh, you know, maybe sometimes you have to pull out a story of, uh, you know, I remember Damon Bradshaw at the same time in Loretta Lens doing this and this and this. And all of a sudden, some of that boredom goes away and a dad somewhere in a motorhome says, man, I remember that. I was here. And all of a sudden, the race tightens back up. Somebody kicks out, steps out, runs over a track marker, and all of a sudden we have action again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, I, I've always been intrigued by that, and you and 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 Bytus, and I mean Tim Cotter. He's one of the most iconic voices. I remember l listening to the great or watching the great outdoors and hearing Tim on on it. And I mean, so you've been around so many great guys. It's funny at the at the Fight Club. I've never had the chance to meet uh west kane or see him in person but i just obviously know who he is through um just following the sport and, it, and i got to witness Wes getting into it uh and, and getting in his zone as him and rob did the uh on-air announcing it man it was it, it's exciting like i've never he just like he looks around and makes eye contact with everybody in the room as he's as he's announcing it's 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 something special and then you have a different style and then rob has a different style it's uh, it's in, in Weege, uh a very different style that he has kind of honed that craft and uh, now he's the the voice of professional motocross. I think that's what's I, unique is it, all of you guys bring something different, um, you know, different to the to the uh, to the broadcast and or the the live event. And I think it's pretty unique. Well, I appreciate that, and, and it's very true. Uh, as you mentioned, whether it's Rob West. Uh, Rodney, any of these guys, uh, th those guys are the best in the business. And I'm very blessed. You know, uh, I was at Tim Cotter's very first national that he ever announced. Okay. I was there at high point. The <laughs> first time he took the mic as a professional announcer, I was there. I was in the days of Art Ackman, Larry Myers, Dave mm. Despain. Okay. I grew up under the greats. Those dudes wore ties. Okay. Those dudes took it serious. They were journalists. They were broadcasters. Let me tell you something. They would bust down a fifth soon as the light went on that camera okay but the guys were consummate pros they each had a style they each had a delivery you know what they were worried about the race mm -hmm. the con the the program that's what they were worried about they weren't worried about art Eklund. they weren't worried about dave Despain. they weren't worried about larry myers you know right. they were worried about a great show yeah Man, 2020 has been a, a strange year that I think when, you know, uh, my team and I were driving to Georgia the day that the president went on and, and declared that, you know, we were in a, a national uh, crisis. Um, and I think leaving that race, uh, coming home, I was scared. I was like, man, I don't I, first off, what's going to happen with my business? What's going to happen with the season? I've put this this race team together. Uh, granted it's, you know, it's e-bikes, it's not moto or, or quads, but man, it was a hell of a lot of work. What's going to happen with all that? Are we going to be able to watch racing? Is Supercross going to continue? All these what ifs. Uh, and then it just continued to really get worse. But one thing that stayed consistent, more consistent than anything else was two wheel racing, dirt bike racing, Supercross got through GNCC didn't really miss a beat. It had some adjustments. It didn't miss a beat. The pro motocross series went off. What what what's your take on on 20, 2020? Because man, you were everywhere. You got to go to all these events. I got to see it, quite a few GNCCs when you weren't at a Pro Motocross National. Being being what it was, what was your take on on the year that we uh, we had? Well, my take is uh, one week before all this busted loose, I was standing at Daytona with Weege and Rick Johnson. I got my arm around Rick Johnson, as we all know, tested positive as soon as he got home. Uh, you know, we're down there. We had the Supercross, we had the Vintage Supercross, the Amateur Supercross. Instead of going up 95 into Georgia, my dumbass takes the long way. I go visit some friends in Gainesville, so I'm over on the border of Arkansas, Alabama, all this. Stuff. I'm taking the long way up through. I came in contact with everything you shouldn't come in contact with, Luke. Mm -hmm. And then this serious, as you said, you're on your way to Georgia and you start uh, hearing things. Hey, man, every state cop that rolled into that facility at Georgia, we're starting to think this is it. 
We come home, things have changed. Let me tell you, Luke, it set the world on ear, and I had fears. One thing that you are connected to, or you're connected to the office as well, the MX Sports, the Racer X office, uh, the Racer Productions office. Roy Jansen, Tim Cotter, Davey Coombs, under the leadership of Kerry Joe Coombs, kept two-wheel motorsports alive and set the precedent for not only all other motorsports, but all other sports in general. The moment they got the phone call, we were in jeopardy. The Safe to Race Toolbox pandemic plan was initiated, Luke. You know this. Around the clock, 24-7. We're not talking to mayors. We're not talking to city councilmen. That's bullshit, dog. These guys were talking to world leaders. They're talking to national health organizations, state senators, governors, congressmen at every place of an event, and even places there weren't events that were concerned about our events. Okay, this was an ongoing thing. This thing was so well orchestrated and put into effect and put into plan that we were absolutely the format for the rest of the motorsports world to move forward. You ask where we're going, Luke. Here's my opinion. Where we're going are to bigger, better places. A lot of things really happened. What really happened in my world, Luke, is I see lots and lots of records being broken in kids' dirt bike cells. Yeah. I see lots and lots of recreation numbers going up in motorsports in general. So that means less kids on iPads, less kids on phones, less kids, which we, we need that. We need the technology you and I are using right now. Guess what? My 11-year-old sitting here beside me to make sure I don't screw anything up on this cast for you. Okay. <laughs> right? But the thing that is, you have to have an early start. You have to have a young base. And what this pandemic would created was time and availability. Parents that didn't even like dirt bikes or never considered a dirt bike bought an electric dirt bike this summer. Mm -hmm. Okay? Doesn't make any noise, Luke. Doesn't leak oil. Doesn't smell like gas in my laundry room. Wow, this is okay. The kid likes it. We're outside. The future I see, national motocross uh, at one day will be very similar to what we watched. Supercross will probably be very different as far as seating the number of spectators. We're starting out one week later than we normally do. We're going to do multiple events in each stadium to make this happen, Luke. I see progress. I see productivity from each and every person involved, such as yourself. I see yourself finding ways to go ride. Make sure that your team can be available. Make sure that they can get there. I see you putting plans into action that are not only safe, but they're going to be productive for you and your guys, whether it's to do this cast or whether it's to go race an e-mountain bike. So you yourself see how that class grew, the e-mountain bikes. You see the enthusiasm there. So the future to me, Luke, to answer your question, is very bright. I see a very positive future. And after the many O's, when I take a look at uh, <clears throat> Nick Romano, Gavin Towers, Luca Marcellisi, uh, Matt LeBlanc, let me tell you something. Danger Boy, we got a strong, strong future coming up. And uh, as far as woods racing goes, the same thing. You touched on I like to find local talent. Uh, you talked about the Kniffs and things like that. Very personal to me. Uh, and that came about with actually Thad Devon, Lane Michael, in about 2002, 2003. Uh, these were significant kids that were being overlooked by a lot of local guys. You know, Randy Hawkins had to get involved. Randy Hawkins, eight hours from us, 10 hours from us right here. Yeah. And it's important to me to get these guys exposure, get these guys support, and kind of stand back and watch. Rick Michael, one of the greatest mini dads ever, and I've dealt with every butthole dad that ever walked the face of the earth. <laughs> every mini mom that thinks she's queen bee, I've dealt with her, okay? I've sent her home in tears at one time or another, all right? I've seen them all. And these are quality people. These are people that committed their lives uh, at, at a local level and saw an opportunity. So, you know, you mentioned Kniff. Uh, you know, we talked about Lane Michael. We talked about uh, Thad Duvall. Uh, at one time, Caleb Russell, you know, loaned Caleb Russell KTMs at one time. Jeff didn't have uh, time to do a lot of things. He didn't call in big favors. He had Hollywood working on bikes. KTM sent some bikes. Guess what? Uh, Mega Watt helped find a few more bikes, <laughs> you know? Right. And all these years later, each of those kids have been champions. And that's very gratifying to me. And to make sure that maybe they get the exposure or that chance or maybe that 
extra loan or this or that, it, it makes a big deal to me. Yeah, definitely. I think it's yeah, it's pretty it's pretty special. Um, just you know, seeing what what's become of a lot of those those racers, and um, you know, it makes a it makes an athlete feel feel good when when somebody like yourself kind of takes them under their wing. And and again, I've heard it from multiple people that you've done that, and that's kind of been that was always my first impression of you was that that's who Megawatt is. And then I started to learn more and more about you. Um, man, you've done a lot of cool things, and uh, that's why I wanted to, to have you on and, and tell that story. I mean, you know, from Des Nation to nationals to gnccs to loretta's nations what's that killed that one yeah right exactly yeah (laughs) and so you were at uh you were at red bud when it was the the mud fest right oh my gosh loved it (laughs) that was wild that was wild i I hope we get a chance to do a redo of that but man you've seen a lot of cool things um And I'm sure you probably wouldn't wouldn't change anything, uh, you know, for for the world because you're you're in a pretty cool spot. You get it, you you've got it seems like one of the most fun jobs at the race. You don't have the pressure of the promoter. You just get to talk and and, and get people hyped up. And uh, man, it, it's cool. And uh, I appreciate you. I appreciate your friendship. It's been cool getting to to hang out with you this year when so many of us weren't sure if we were going to get to be at a race at all. Kept my sanity. And uh, I appreciate the love and support you've always given us this year with the with all the stuff we're doing with the e-bikes and. And, you know, it's it's very easy to make fun of that sport when you're you're around such an extreme thing like 250s, 450s, whatever. Uh, and then you got guys rolling up on uh, pedal assist bicycles, and and you you've always hyped us up. It's uh, it's been it's been cool, and I'm excited about next season as well. Well, man, I I can't thank you enough. I appreciate you you know taking time, uh, allowing me to have a spot today. And you know, it's easy to hype up guys like Charlie Mullins, Colin Colin Dearman. Uh, you know, Cooper Kniff, uh, Luke Nessler. It's easy to uh, hype up guys like that. So believe me, e-bike, no mountain joke, dude. Yeah. Or, uh, no, e-mountain bikes, no joke for yeah, sure, Yeah, no buddy. doubt, no <laughs> doubt. Megawatt, I appreciate it, brother. It was good having you on. And uh, everybody you know, that listens to this, if you haven't had a chance to meet Megawatt, if you see him at a race, be sure to go up, say hi, and, uh, and shake his hand. And, uh, man, we appreciate you being on. Thank you, Luke. I appreciate you. Merry Christmas, bro. All right, brother. Have a great holiday. Thank you for listening to the Moto Marketing Podcast. If your goal is to get real, measurable results from your marketing that will grow your company revenue, then check out how Impact Media can get the same results that they have for Moto's most iconic brands by visiting thinkimpact.com. That's T-H-I-N-K-I-M-P-A-K-T.com. Have a marketing question that you want answered on the show? Send your questions to questions at motomarketingpodcast.com. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. And we'll catch you on the next episode of the Moto Marketing Podcast.